Um, so if you're new, welcome. I'm Julie Samako, owner of Southern Charmies, where we make beautiful wreaths and teach you how to make and sell them. We're not doing a wreath in this tutorial. We're going to be making a lantern swag. Um, I've been posting about lantern swags on my Instagram reels and Facebook reels, and people are like enthralled with them. Some people have never even seen them. I think if you're in the South, it's sort of a big thing um, to put a floral arrangement on your lanterns. Lanterns are very big in the South, at least in the, um, I don't know, even in the rural, the rural areas especially, but also in the um, urban, is that the opposite of our rural? Yes, I think so. They're just the different styles of lanterns. So there's a lot of different varieties of lanterns, and I'm just gonna be working on this one right here. But uh, having an arrangement on top is fun for the holidays because it adds that little pop of color across the room, on the fireplace, on the front porch, on the back deck, wherever you're, you know, needing just a little bit of color, but you don't want to put a big old, you know, arrangement or something. It's just put a lantern out there with a candle and then have a little uh, something on the top. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This is something we made in our wreath making of the month club last night. I love it. It's kind of uh, going around that uh, more of a country vibe lodge type feel. I like this. This is really pretty. So I thought, what can we do to sort of, um, you know, not match exactly, but coordinate with it. How about that? Now, my first thing I like to do, hey, Karen, is to find an inspiration piece. So this could be a flower spray. This could be a sign. It could be your uh, ribbons, okay? So whatever it is, um, that's for you. That's a kind of an inspirational piece. That's kind of where I start. And so for me, it was this sign. This is sort of my inspiration for this project. It's just a little sign and it's got a, a winter scene with barn and uh, some little cardinals in the snow. So I went with this choosing all of my florals, greenery, and also my ribbon pieces. So let's go ahead and start this, but you can see this is kind of how I do it. I find something that's my inspiration, the colors, you can see that there's blue greens, there's whites, there's black and um, red, and then the white, right? So this is kind of our color palette. And then we choose going from there, how to get, um, how to, how to choose your, your um, elements based off that color palette, okay? So we've got over on YouTube, did you mention where you got that lantern? Um, I did not, but thanks for reminding me. I got this from Carolina Pottery. It's an 18 inch. Um, I use this for staging purposes only for my arrangements, my toppers, my lantern swags. I don't sell the whole uh, lantern. I just sell the top piece, okay? So I use this for just styling purposes only. All right, so that's a great question, thanks. And if I miss y'all's questions, I'll have to come back and answer them. But let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'd like to do is just take a look at your lantern and see the overall size. We don't want something that's gonna cover up the whole thing. You wanna still be able to see inside of your lantern and know that there is you know, a candle in there, maybe you put ornaments or pine cones or something like that. You still want to be able to see inside of your lantern. So don't, you know, it's not draped on the top. And I guess if that's what you like, you could put it over the, the sides both ways. I just like mine a swag on the side. And that's why I call mine a lantern swag. So if you're selling these on Etsy, that's kind of what people like to search for. Lantern swags, lantern arrangements, lantern toppers. All right, so first thing I wanna show you are the greenery. Okay, so we have different types of greenery. A lot of people ask me about greenery and uh, it trips them up a little bit. And I think the reasoning is, is because there are different shades of green. There's a dark green like this, right? So this is just a little pick that's Christmassy and it's the dark sort of evergreen. And then you have a lime, a yellow green, I guess you would say. So this has got a little bit of a yellow tint to it. So this is a really pretty piece that you could put, both of these you could put as your base 
on your lantern topper. And then I wanted to show you this one. This one is uh, more of a blue green. All right, so you see the difference in the greens. So I just wanna make sure you understand that there are different colors of greens and sometimes this trips people up. So remember, we're using this sort of our inspirational piece. So I would, wanted to make sure I had snow and berries and the greenery. All right, so I've chose this um, spray. It's got heavily flocked with snow, you know, fake snow, and it's got the berries and it's got the blue green uh, greenery. So that's why I chose to pair it with this blue green greenery. Let me angle this down just a bit. All right, so I just wanted to, I'm not gonna use these, but I wanted to show you there are options. Either one of these would have been good to use. All right, so we're gonna move on to um, assembling. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna do is just sort of um, hand do this. I just layer these on top of each other. And these can be as elaborate or as simple as you want them. If you just wanna put a bow on your lantern, there ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Always take the time. I tell my uh, wreath of the month club group to always, always shape your stems. All right, so we've got this one here. And now I'm gonna take this one and, and store, uh, place it on top of it. I think it's because stores like Hobby Lobby and Michaels specifically label greenery as fall. Oh, Danielle, that, that's a good point. That could be what's going on. So remember, we're gonna take our time to fluff and, fluff and shape. Fluff and shape. It could be that. Um, and I know too that the whole, for wholesalers, you only buy certain greens during certain time of the year. So for example, if you're looking for a boxwood, you can only find that during the um, spring months. However, boxwood is evergreen, so you could be using it all year round. So I don't know if that's it or not. I think it's just a combination of everything. All right, you see how I'm t intertwining these together, marrying these. We're just mixing this up, getting it merged, married, incorporated, whatever you wanna use that word. See, they're sort of together now. It looks like one piece, but it's really two. And also, I'm gonna like put it up here just to measure the size. I don't want it touching the ground. I want it just draping. So maybe two thirds of the way down, two thirds of the way down. All right, let me get this guy over here. All right, so we put these two together. Now, this is the bottom, and I'm going to work on the top. So for the top, we don't need it to be as long as the bottom. We only need it to be um, a third of what we have on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these off. I got these from Sims Pottery. Has anybody ever shopped there before? All right, so I'm gonna put this at the top, I believe. We got that. Don't, don't get rid of these. We can still use these. I'm just gonna put them over to the side. And then here is another piece. So this is completely different than the, style, than the spray that I used before. This spray was from a different company and it was a different um, store and a different maker. This is you know completely different. So. Don't be afraid, you know, to use other things. Just make sure that the colors match up when you're pairing them together. Let's get this label off. And then there are these pine cones at the bottom. They're not gonna be seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those, but do not throw those away. Do not throw those, never throw anything away off of your spray. You paid for all of this, you might as well use it. If you throw it away, it's like throwing money in the trash. So I'm gonna put that over to the side because we're gonna incorporate it. And then let me just shape this a little bit. And we're not gonna need all of this on the 
So I'm going to pull this off, but don't get rid of it. We're going to use it. All right, I'm just shaping this. Let's get that up that way. All right, let's see. I think that looks good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and well, let's put it all together and then we'll trim. All right, so let's get this married and incorporated. So we've got that greenery on top that's tied in with the greenery on the bottom now. Okay, so we, we see how we just layer these together, mix them up so that it looks like a natural blend. Are these from Hobby Lobby? No, these are not from Hobby Lobby. All right, let's see. Now what we're gonna do is layer these on top of each other. Now, how far depends on how long you want your swag. So always keep in mind, I'm using an 18 inch. If I was using a 30 inch or even um, a 20 inch spray, I might want this to be a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and put these closer together. And I'm gonna leave enough room right here for my bow. And typically my bow is about the width of my hand. So I kind of use this as my, my guide, maybe a little more. All right, and now that those are together, I'm gonna get some zip ties. We're gonna zip tie these together. If you wanna do zip tie the bottom and then zip tie the top and then zip tie all of it together, you can. This flocking makes me wanna sneeze every time. Tis the season, I know it's just fall first, you know, some of you are like, well, we even haven't, we haven't even decorated for fall yet or Halloween. Um, it's okay. When you're ready to do a Christmas lantern topper, you can come back to this video. All right, so we've got that zip tied together. Hello from Tennessee. Okay, you see how we've got that there? Now what we're gonna do is create, actually let's go ahead and cut these long stems off. We don't need all of this. And what it's gonna do is add to the weight. Now you can, if see this is a very pretty stem. It looks rustic. You can bend and you know use this later or you could bend and use it in this arrangement if you want to, but um, it's just gonna add to the weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. Just be careful when you're trimming that you're not trimming the, the stems you want to keep. You're just trimming the ends, the ends of the stems. Let's get this one. All right, so we've got those trimmed off. And now let's work on our bow. All right, so for our bow, I typically like to use five different kinds of ribbon. You can use one if you want to, it's completely up to you. I like to do a more whimsical, trendy, uh, funky bow. So we're gonna use multiple ribbons. I've got this one that, remind, remember we're keeping in mind our inspirational piece, which is um, rustic barn country look. All right, so I'm gonna take our ribbon. We've got this one, I've got this one. I'm just thinking in my head what I'm gonna do. I also wanted to show you that, um, you know, the Buffalo plaid is really popular for that style of um, wreath or arrangement. And so I brought this over. I thought this would be really pretty to use, but you know what? I could have put these in there. This would have been really pretty to put in here, wouldn't it? Hmm, maybe we'll go back and incorporate these. All right, so let's go ahead and get that. I'm gonna use these ribbons. I'm gonna get my wire ready 
Who likes to hand tie bows? Do you decorate? When do you start decorating for Christmas? Hi from Scotland. Welcome. All right, we're going to do a little bit of a tail. So I'm just measuring the size of the spray. And that's going to kind of go in the back of my long spray. All right, so we're going to do 12 inches on our mat. So when you measure 12 inches, it produces a six inch loop. So we've got six inch loop right here. Twist towards you. I'm going to lay it on my mat for another 12 inches. Take this away from me to make another loop and pinch and twist. All right, so we've got a two loops right now. Cut that. Let's make this a little shorter. There we go. All right, so we've got two loops. I'm going to go ahead and incorporate one loop of this. I'm going to measure 12 inches. Take it away from me and pinch. Must have gotten off a little bit on that 12 inches, but I'm just gauging with the ones that I've already made. Let's see, did I twist? Pinch this and then twist. Cut. All right, so we've got one loop. This is the loop that's off. Okay, I think that's close enough. All right, so we've got one loop of here. Let's go ahead and add our red. So we have one loop on this side. We want another loop on the opposite side. So I'm going to start in the opposite direction. And then measure out the 12 inches. So we've got that solid red right here, cut, one, two, three, four, let's see, do I want to add one more of these? I kind of like this. Let's do one more of this. There's no set formula, y'all, just, just create something that you like. Twist. All right, so you can see that we've added and we've got, let's see, we've got two loops below our thumb and three loops above our thumb. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna go ahead and add in this seven eighths inch. make these 10. I'm concentrating. Let's go ahead and put one of these behind behind the bow to bring some of that color in the back. All right, so we've got that. And I'm gonna turn this over. 
and then lift up my finger and add my wire around. All right, before I twist everything off, I'm just gonna make sure all my tails are in the back, like away from the bows. I want the bow loops on top. So I'm gonna put them, make sure the bow loops are mixed with color wise and the bow loops are on the top and the streamers are on the back. Do you see how I made that little adjustment? And I'm gonna turn this over and now this is where I'm going to attack, I mean, um, tighten up the wire. Oh, you know what? How did I miss that one? This has been an odd week for me. Somebody said it was mercury retrograde. I'm like, I don't know what it is. I just feel off. Things are off this week. All right, there we go. So isn't that fun? Just a fun bow, <laughs> a fun little bow idea that you could, yeah, you could put this on your tree, you could put this on your mailbox. All right, so now that we've made our bow, get the ribbon out of the way. Before I add this on, I meant to incorporate some of these. Don't these just look fun? So let's see if we can incorporate these. One, two, three. If I had any more zip ties, I could zip tie these together. All right, so let's, let's just wire it. I'm gonna wire this on. Let me see if I have a smaller zip tie. Don't you hate these small zip ties? It's almost like, oh, my fingers are too fat for them. All right, let's go ahead and wire this one here. And then I'm gonna get the yellow tape off. I want the color to fall right here. And I want the color of this one to fall maybe back here, right here somewhere. All right, so I'm just gonna line them all up before I zip tie. I'm concentrating so that I get all of this zip tied together. I do not sell ribbon or flowers or supplies. I should, I probably could make some money. No, I usually refer everybody to all my, my friends who sell it. The gauge of my floral wire is 22. Thank you for that question. All right, I'm, these are not long enough, so I'm gonna zip, I'm gonna add two of these together. And I'm gonna just come over here. So I'm just trying to add in our little ornaments. Well, welcome New Mexico in the house. We got Tennessee in the house, South Carolina in the house. All right, so now what we can do is move these around and just sort of incorporate these and just try to hide that white stem a little bit. Okay. 
Isn't that fun? So there's, you know, if you wanted to take it apart, you could and add them, but I'm just going to do it this way because I don't have any more zip ties except for the little ones. All right, how many do we, let's do this one over on this side. And this one we want tall. So I'm just placing these to figure out where I want to add them. And then zip tie these. North Carolina, California, New York. Is anybody going to do a country theme with their Christmas this year? I think um, this year I'm going to do uh, creams and mixed metallics. Why is this not working? There. I don't do it new. I don't do something different every year. It's just, um, you know, I think every two or three years. Although last year was something new, but I just didn't like it as much. You need to do what you like, not necessarily what's on trend. Am I right? All right, so we've got this added to the, the top piece. All right, so you see how we have a dumbbell? We can get our exercises in. This is about as much as I lift weights. You can tell by my fatty arms. But this is fun, huh? All right, now we're going to add our bow. Put that long tail on the back side of the long piece and then feed the wire. I think I tied it too much. I don't want like an inch of wire. There we go. Oh, you got a new puppy. Now that was, that's fun, but I can see why you wouldn't want to put a tree up with a new puppy. I'm just going to twist this on. Hello from Sweden and Wales. Okay, so we've got that. Now to cover this up, these are the mechanics. So you want to cover up your mechanics. If you, you know, if you're going to keep this for your home, you don't need to do this step. But if I sell some of these things and I really like to be as professional as I can, where's the, so I've got some hot glue right over here. It's melting in my oh, fry skillet, my electric fry skillet. It's just crafting glue and it's melted. And I'm just going to add some of this without burning myself. <clears throat> we're going to go right over on top to cover up that. Okay, says as long as it's red. Oh, somebody gave a tip for the puppy. They said, put your tree in a playpen. Put a playpen around your tree. 
so the new puppy doesn't get to it. I can't decide if I want to get a new puppy or not. I think if I do, it's going to be in January after all the Christmas madness. All right, I'm just going to add a little more glue here. I know this part is optional, um, but I got to do it right now or, because you can't do it last. You need to do it now. I purchased my electric fry pan off of the Amazon. It's an eight inch, but I used 12 inch before. All right, so you see how we added that? Let's go through and let's add it to the, the piece first before I trim my streamers. I'm pulling all of these. I want to put some black down here. I like that little added black part. All right, so we've got that. I'm gonna pull this over. And make sure you can see, I know that with the camera angle, it's a little um, skewed, but here is the, the height. And we wanna to measure to make sure that we're not covering up too much of the side, all right? Let me angle down a little bit more. There, all right, so we don't wanna cover up too much of the side, remember? So this is gonna determine sort of where you add your wire to hang it onto the lantern. Do you put it under the bow or do you put it on top of the bow? I'm just gonna put this on top and I need my rustic wire. I'm gonna use a little piece of rustic wire to do that. If you only wanted to put three loops, you know, if you're, if you're, if you like some ribbon, but you're just not a big fan of all the big bows, um, you don't have to put as many loops as I did. You could just put a three loop bow. So it's completely up to you. Make it your own. I'm just attaching. Where's the front? Okay, right. There we go. So you add it to the top just like this, but this is where a lot of people stop. And this is, you need to do more than just this. All right, you need to do a little bit more. So we need to make sure our bow sort of blends in with our arrangement. And also we need to shape the arrangement to go around the lantern. So I'm gonna bend this just a little bit, pulling it down a little, okay? So that it pulls closer. And what that's going to do is it's also going to separate some of these pieces. And then I'm going to do the top as well. <clears throat> All right, so now we've got sort of the bottom done. And now I'm going to do the top. Let me show you what it looks like. Let me try to figure this out. Hold on, it keeps rotating. Why is it rotating? Let me think. It's a little top heavy, that's probably why. Okay, let me figure that out. Y'all like how I just Think through the process and troubleshoot. All right, what we're gonna do is, all I'm gonna do is just adjust some of this stuff down around the bow. Bend it a little bit more towards the back of the lantern. 
already. That looks really cute. All right, so now what I want to do is move the loops around on my bow and trim. So we've got a lot of red on the top. Make sure our black is intertwined and then go through and dovetail any of these loops. I'm sorry, the, these little streamers. So we've got a lot of stuff going on over here. So we've got some solid red. Let's put that up that way. And then let's go ahead and maybe I'll wrap that that way. I'm just making sure that the bow is not so I don't want the bow to take over the lantern. Does that make sense? Just trimming these back. I love that little black and white. All right, let me trim this one and I'll show you what we have. That's fun, huh? So now at this point, what I'm gonna do is also keep adding a little bit more to the bow so that the bow just, you know, intermingles a little bit more with the piece. All right, so remember these little pieces of greenery that we cut off and we didn't use? We're gonna use them now. We're gonna hot glue them into the bow loops. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take your eye from the top down. You want your eye to flow and not really stop right here at the transition point. We wanna kinda of mask that this is the transition point. So we wanna add a little bit of sprigs of our greenery. Right here's that. Let's take this off. Got a berry. And we have these. And you have some pine cones that we could add. Let's see where I'm going to stick this. I think right there. I'm just going to make sure that this is getting into the loops of the bow. Hold that there for a minute. <clears throat> How do you cover up the wire? I don't cover up the wire. I make sure that the wire blends pretty good. I don't cover up the wire though, if that attaches to the lantern. You've got to, you've got to be able to, um, did it stick? You've got to be able to take it on and off of your lantern. Get this cut. I think I'm going to cut this a little bit more. All right, so we've got one added right here. So we're continuing that line right there. And we're going to do one on the opposite side. This flocking is getting to my nose. <clears throat> oh, Julie signing up for a craft show. Definitely, these lantern swags are really popular. All right, so let me show you. I added this one right here. So we added one here and one on this side. Let's 
just make this a little smaller. So we added one here and one there. So you see more of how the bow is sort of to, starting to blend a little bit with the arrangement. If you're gonna use a chenille stem to attach it, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's doubled up. Let's get this bent. have a little area right here that just looks like it needs something. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of these pine cones. I think that's a little fat. How about this? We got that little piece. Just put that there. So it just covers up a little hole right there. And we've got this berry. I don't know where we could put those pine cones. All right. So right here, it looks like a perfect area for one of these pine cones to go. Let's see, so I think I'm going to use this one. I'm going to take off the wire that's on there. And I'm going to add my own wire because that one was too short. Did y'all see my reel on how to wire pine cones? You're just going to take this and feed it around. This one's heavily glittered. All right, now I'm going to find on here where I want to wire. And this way we can use our pine cone instead of you don't want anything laying around the craft room, do we? And you don't want to throw it away. I'm using the bind wire to wire this and it just blends really pretty with it. Let's see if I can get it turned. And here's this pine cone. Here's this pine cone down here. So now we've got a little path of pine cones, one here, one here, and one here. So this is the one we just wired on. When you go to wire, you wanna make sure you're wiring to the stem of the spray and not one that you've hot glued into the bow. All right, so now let's get this one on. And then I wanna show you how you can put this on a different kind of lantern. <clears throat> All right, so I'm still, feel like there needs to be one right here. So I'm just gonna take that wire
okay and I feel like this piece is a little bit too long let's cut that back and let's get this sky glued in over here we need some we got a lot of red on one side we're gonna move some red on the other side I balance the red the red berries, I should say. Okay, so let me show you what we have, and then I want to show you an option of displaying it. So this was, remember, this is our inspirational piece that we tried to match or coordinate with. Looks pretty cute. So here is the front and side and top and the back all right so now let me show you what it looks like if you put it on another lantern I've got this one Figure out where I'm going to hang this. Give me a minute to figure out how to hang this. Um, here's the front. Okay. Let's go. See if that's going to work. You can always wire it onto the hanger, the handle, I should say. I was trying to use the little top part. All right, let's move this now. And then we can bend this and bend this down a little bit more. All right, so you can see we've added it to a whole nother lantern. Isn't that fun? And then on the inside of this lantern, you could put a candle. You could put our inspirational sign. You make a little vignette on the inside of this. You could put little sprigs of greenery. Where do we have some greenery? I would probably cut these, but I'm not going to cut them because I still need to use them in a project. But just to have a little vignette, can you, let's see how we can show this. Do you see inside there? It's got a little sign, candles, some greenery. You um, could, instead of a candle, you could put it ornaments you don't want to put a real candle you always want to put a flame a flameless so a battery operated one but you've got just a cute little vignette inside of that with your lantern topper on top of it <clears throat> so Carla's not digging the solid red and let me tell you where I put why I put it there solid uh, Carla is because 
if you're, it's probably fine if you didn't do a solid red here because you got a lot of red and you got red here. However, when you're mixing a lot of patterns and prints, you always, I always want to put in a solid to kind of ground all of the patterns. So typically the solid would be one of the same colors that are in mo multiple, um, or at least the most of the ribbons. Here we have red, so I chose red, but this could have easily been another checkered print. Um, and it still would have looked fine. But if you didn't have checker print, checker print, checker print, what if you had, um, you know, a holly print and a red, white, you know, red and white striped print, and then you had a snowman print, you would want to put a solid in in order to ground all of those patterns and prints together. That's why I like to use at least one solid. But she's right, you don't have to do the solid, you could do something else. It's up to y'all but that's my thinking. How fun. <clears throat> All right, you guys, that's the project for today. It's a fun little um, lantern topper, lantern arrangement, lantern swag. Oh, y'all wanna see another thing you can do? Have y'all seen those bike wheels? I put that bike wheel over here you can take that spray that you just did for lantern and attach it to a bike wheel and you've got a like an alternative wreath so you could take it and add it in the center or you could put it on the side and it's just an alternative to um, a wreath you can also take it add it to a lamp post you can add it to a regular green wreath you can add it to where else the mailbox you can add these things um, lots of places on the banisters of your home for stairs this is a very versatile piece if you're trying to sell these i heard some of you saying you were going to incorporate these in your craft shows make sure you really tell them all of the different options because they're not going to think of it until you tell them so you could tell them you know all the places that I just said, you can put them on the back of chairs, all of those. You're welcome, Carla. <clears throat> Delaney, she took our bow making class. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not caught up with all of the comments. Um, you guys, thanks for joining me tonight. I'll have to come back in and answer questions. I'm getting ready to head out to dinner with the family. But it looks really fun and festive. I think it's a perfect for a little country themed lantern swag. Let me know if you're gonna incorporate some of this into your own home, maybe using golds and reds or emerald green and reds. Just let me know uh, below if you liked this lantern swag. And make sure to follow and subscribe if you're on Facebook. Make sure to follow us on our Facebook page. If you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and like um, over there.